Hey, we're back. Recently, uh, yeah, Mr. Mark O'Brien was on the on the rickety road. He was on like a yeah. He was on a very extended trip. Yes, uh, Mark, you could find at his uh, random camera blog online. And Mark O'Brien is also on social media, on the Instagram, and he frequently will hit the road with his camera and, like, you know, mm. take, like, old Route 66 or something, yeah. you know, he'll go. Mark had the um, pleasure of meeting a gentleman by the name of Kent Shamness. That was one of his uh, stops on this uh, last trip? Yes. Well, as you had mentioned before the break, Mark publishes his own magazine. It's called uh, Monochromania. Right. You know, if you're a self-publisher... You know, you publish whatever, 100 copies, 200 copies, you know, a few hunch copies. Yeah, not a ton. If you're, I guess I have enough of a following, if people, you know, are aware of what you do and what you've been doing, and Mark's been doing it a long time, mm-hmm. you could sell out. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, must be. So I, I would guess uh, Mark, as a publisher himself, I guess is attuned to other. He knows other people in the zine community. Zine. Because I'm sure he purchases them as well as just putting them out. Yes. Kent has uh, NSEW magazine. And uh, let's, uh, let's roll that in. Sure. Let's see what they're all about. This is Mark O'Brien with the Film Photography Project. And I'm here in Tucson, Arizona with Kent Chamness, the editor and publisher of NSEW magazine, which is a photography magazine. When did you start writing a zine? We started about two years ago and really um, I think really the impetus for me with Enso, starting Enso was um, I I wanted to have a space that was not online that would hold people from different regions of the U.S. because we really wanted to uh, examine how someone's environment affects their art and I think that I, I think we do a good job of it I don't know but but um, but that was our, our first goal um, the second goal was to try to pull people away from computers just a little bit because I think there's there's space for everything um, but we wanted something where you could hold something in your hands and not be swiping left and right and that you could like sit and contemplate over something with a cup of coffee you know kind of that that whole thing as I started just getting into uh, reaching out across uh, the country in, in just in connections and emails with other photographers I was like we gotta we gotta put this together into something and I don't know what something is and it turned out being Enzo okay I, I grew up here in Tucson and uh, went to a performing arts school because it had um, a, a photography department that was actually one of the best in the country and it's actually really interesting because the uh, Center for Creative Photography that's here at the U of A, which is fantastic, and they've they've actually just renovated it. And I haven't. And during COVID, they were closed. Oh, okay. So I haven't been able to get back there. But but uh, people should go. It houses the archives of Ansel Adams, uh, uh, Eugene Smith. Uh, I mean, just many many photographers yeah. that have just fantastic stuff. And their doors are open, right? It's yeah. part of the U of A. So that, so if you wanted to take an archival tour, you could go and be like. Here's these negatives that were, you know, in the hands of these masters, right? And uh, and I do not, in any way, uh, suppose that Enso is is touching those giants. But the point of it is the same: is that yeah. you're is that you're holding it and you're touching it, and you're contemplating, and 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 you look at something, and you go, how did they do that, right? So uh, so for me, as an example, I look at a contributor from the first issue of Enso, who is Don Surratt. Uh, she's from North Carolina. I look at her work and I go, I don't, I don't understand how she does that. It's not long exposure. It's not, uh, you know, some sort of manipulation. I, I don't know what she's doing, but it's fantastic and it's beautiful. And it's like, she's mixing art and photography together. And I was like, I, I'm in, I, I cannot fathom how she's doing this, but people need to see it, right? Uh-huh. I reach out specifically to specific photographers and say, hey, can you do a, an eight-page spread um, if you're interested? And the reason for the magazine is not to make money or to become famous. The reason for the magazine is so that as a reader, you're introduced to four new photographers that you never knew. And now you have this connection with them. And then you have their info 
to connect with them, just like you and I are sitting down right, right now because of this magazine. And yeah, I find that as I've been talking to other film users and stuff, the film photography community is a really generous, open-hearted, open-armed community. In, in a way, in doing the same thing like what you're talking about, right. it's kind of creating your own gallery space. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and so we wanted to do that, but with uh, with uh, a few different people who, let, let's face it, their their work is fantastic. Like Jason Boehner on the on the cover of, uh -huh. of this issue of Enzo. Oh. oh yeah, the guy's doing great stuff with wet plate. I mean, it's it's oh. really great stuff, and and people need to see it. You know, our goal is to hit zero, and then anything over zero, we actually. Uh, uh, donate to a local Tucson charity. Okay. So, um, so actually, this this issues is uh, for a, a, a organization called Yoto or Youth on Their Own. Okay. And what it provides is um, it actually provides support for homeless teenagers to graduate okay. high school. Okay. Right, That's which good. we think is a fantastic mission. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, organizations within Tucson that support Yoto, and and so we want to be there. So. If we can get past that zero point, right. then, then we'll be sending a check. And, and really, Mark, the, the check would be coming from you, right? right the check right. would be coming from anyone that purchases it, not coming from me. So that, that's kind of our mission. You know, Our mission is like, hey, let's get photography into people's hands. Let's make zero dollars so we don't, we don't have an ulterior motive here. Right. You know? So we'll see. We'll yeah. see how it goes. But it's been fun so far. And, and I do want to say um, I, have, I have help in uh, a guy who's been a contributor a few times. Uh, named Chris Schumacher. He's now in Virginia. Um, he was in Tucson, but he's now in he's now in Virginia, and he's actually our copy editor. Oh, great! And and then I'll run. Uh, I run everything by Chris, and I'm like, what do you think about this type of paper and this? And so we think we've got it where we want it now. And, and Chris is a not just a huge help, but he he's kind of co co doing Enso with me at this point, and, and I I couldn't do it without him. So he's a fantastic guy, great photographer. Well, thanks. It's been a great. Yeah time talking to you about the zines. It's also been great meeting you. One good time deserves another. And you can double the fun of any day's outing with a brownie camera by Kodak. This Brownie Starmite camera, for example, is the handiest flash camera Kodak ever made. And it lets you get good pictures the first time, with no instruction at all. <laughs> no instruction at all. You can count on clear, bright snapshots in black and white or color. Even color slides you can show as big as life. The Starmite camera with built-in flash holder costs less than $12. Other Brownie cameras cost less than $7. Remember, only a brownie camera gives you so much pleasure at so low a cost.